Okay. Well, I guess you can't have the video on the phone while you're on the phone. I guess she's reading a book and yesterday I was on her phone and I was going through tabs and I erased a bunch of them because she had a bunch of tabs open. So I was trying to get a movie to play and I guess I erased the tab she was looking for, but I didn't know it erased different book tabs and she had tabs she was saving, I didn't know, whatever. Right, so I was in a good goddamn mood. You know, when they say happy wife, happy life, they are not fucking kidding. I was in a fantastic mood right up until that point. Now I'm all pissy heading into work. Oh boy, oh boy, over a book. Really? A book? Who reads anymore? <laughs> Who watches TV reading? What are we in the 90s? <laughs> Whatever. I mean, in her defense, this is not the first time I've done this. I guess I did it a few weeks ago, as she pointed out. I want to say she was right, but she might have been a little right. Doesn't matter. Right or not, it wasn't right what she did. How dare she call me in my work when I'm on the way to work? little bitch but if y'all want to know that's how you retain a happy marriage because I can probably say uh, with almost full sincerity I don't know anybody my age or younger who has been with their significant other longer than me and Erica has been together we have been together, if I add it all up, 25 years, and I'm only like mid-30s myself. See, we were each other's firsts when we were young, and then, of course, as a kid, I did stupid shit, I got shipped off, and we, I was living abroad for a while there as a kid and then we got back together right before adulthood at like 16 17 and that's it i mean we both like i said we started with each other something happened i had to go away for a while and then came back about three four years later and we hit it back off and that's it and wow, that would be 20 some years ago. And we have been together for that long. There is nothing I cannot tell my wife. There is nothing she cannot tell me. I mean, we might fight about it. But I mean, I, I've done some pretty fucked up stuff to her. Which, in the guise of, I thought it was funny. I mean, that's my only defense. I think the one time I gave her a uh, peanut butter and jelly sandwich out of the blue. Of course, she was wondering it. And I just got a brand new, like, habanero hot sauce. It was pretty hot. So I loaded up in the middle, probably about, I don't know, a few tablespoons of that fucking hot sauce. She was not happy about that. <laughs> yeah, she was not happy about that. Uh... One other one I can't say on here, so, so kill me. Yeah, but just like sexual stuff that we did and I did to her. I thought it was funny as hell. She didn't think it was funny. You know, some stuff she did to me. Like I think she grabbed a cup of flour the one time and threw it at me while I was in the goddamn shower. She got, she saw it on YouTube or something, or before YouTube or some shit, a bunch of years back. It was not funny. I didn't find the humor in that at all. She thought it was the funniest thing in the goddamn world. I remember having her ass print on my front windshield probably for about a week when I was like 19. 
use your imagination. That's how it happened. Yeah. And when I was younger and didn't have like money, I wanted to like do stuff all like sweet like. <clears throat> so I mean, I'm probably not proud of it now, but when I was like 18 or 19 and living out of a, a Jeep at the time and didn't have a lot of money. So for the one Valentine's Day, I went around to a nice rich neighborhood and took flowers from like 18 different houses and made a big bouquet. <clears throat> I don't know if that'll give me trouble now. I mean, 20 years later, I don't know what the statute of limitation is on flowers. But I made her a beautiful bouquet. She thought it was sweet. Never thought of where I got it from. But she couldn't have thought I paid a bunch of money. Because at the time, I was living out of a car. <laughs> I thought that was uh, sticking outside the box, you know? <clears throat> I remember younger than that, being embarrassed to buy a, um, what was it called? Our pregnancy test, because we had a scare there. And I, I had money for it, but I didn't want to go up there and pay for it. So I, uh, good, you're good. So instead of pay for it, I uh, I tried to take it. And then when I took it, uh, it was not very good with it, I guess. I immediately got caught. <laughs> and I got put in handcuffs, and I sat there, and they were saying, well, you know what, man, kind of man you want to be, and all this other shit. Yeah. That was a pretty low point. I think I was like 17 or 16 at the time. Yeah. Not a smart move. But again, I, I was pretty young in my defense. Not saying I'm much smarter now, but I don't steal stuff. <laughs> yeah, and it wasn't. Even, I didn't have the money. It just I, I was embarrassed to even buy it. <laughs> but hey, what are you gonna do? Stupid little things you do as a kid. I just well, see, statue of limitations can't do shit about that because I got caught, <laughs> and the embarrassment of sitting there in handcuffs probably scared me straight. That's why I'm not gay now. <laughs> Get it? Oh. Yeah, it's kind of fucked up. What would happen if a, if a gay guy wouldn't date a trans man? Nothing. Would one be gay phobic or one be transphobic? Interesting. Food for thought. Have a good day. I'm here. If you have a significant other, if you have that special somebody, whack him on the ass. Because she'll like it. Softly, but with intent.